on behalf of CII and SJ Cabin Engineering, uh, I'm Sanjay Vasti welcoming you all who is joining us on this presentation on diffuser technology. Welcome back. We were discussing about diffuser technology and its uh, benefits in sugar industry. First of all, I want to tell you that in present scenario where we are making sugar as more sustainable business model uh, and we are hit by the prices of high cane prices and sugar is also not really picking up. So we have to dependent on more on cogeneration and other uh, revenue streams of sugar industry. And for generating more power, we have to have certain uh, technologies who are consuming less uh, power as well as give us higher extraction efficiencies and less operating and maintenance cost. In our opinion, cane diffusion is one such option for the sugar industry. This was adopted in 1970s and then it was rapidly grown in uh, most, most part of the world, although not so popular in India and Australia, but uh, Egypt and uh, Brazil, uh, South Africa, they are very popular. Extraction and diffuser is uh, approximately 1.5 to 2 percent more than a milling. The primary reasons why we advocate for milling is a diffuser instead of milling is tremendous amount of energy get wasted in the process of juice extraction by milling due to reabsorption of juice by pegas. Then consequently the mill consumes considerable power out of proportion to result obtained the mills require high capital cost in terms of mechanical and civil and also higher cost of operation and maintenance. Extraction of sugar by milling process is about 1.5 to 2 percent lower than diffusion process. In sugar mill with cogeneration, the profitability increases as specific power export per ton of cane increases. So ISJEC has pioneered this technology in collaboration with Bosch Project South Africa. And we installed two chainless diffusers which are running since last three years for Hindustan Petroleum Corporations Limited in their plant Sugoli Lauria in Bihar. The principle of diffusion as we know that milling is basically compression whereas the, you know the diffuser is a based on diffusion the phenomena in which two solutions of different concentration located side by side or separated by membrane exchanged by osmosis across the membrane. If it is the case of two solutions of the same substance, the exchange take place until the concentration is same on each side of membrane. So in this, to elaborate it further, in diffuser you maintain a 1.5 meter bed in a approximately 57 to 60 meter long box where you are putting low concentration juices to the next chamber and there are total 11 chambers. <coughs> Sorry. So by this 
you are con low, low concentration juice is taking out higher ex concentration sugar in a fiber capillary and uh, this fiber is basically a kind of a membrane where this osmosis takes place and diffusion takes place. In extraction technology, the diffusion is defined as the movement of sucrose and non-sucrose substance from higher concentration to lower concentration. And the protoplasm act as a semi-permeable membrane. The concentration difference between both sides of membrane is driving force of diffusion. The extraction process from cane can be modeled as two mass transfer process in parallel. One is fast, fast and represents the extraction of sugar in broken cells from the surface of particles. The rate of transfer is influenced mainly by velocity of liquid flow past the particles. The second mass transfer process is much slower, representing the rate of transfer of sugar from unbroken cells or from broken cells in interior of the particles. The rate of transfer is dependent on temperature which affects the rate of diffusion. Now just to give a brief idea about the milling versus diffusion. The capital cost in diffusion installations is approximately 20 to 30 percent less than milling tandem. This we are talking about for getting almost the same extraction, apple to apple comparison. Maintenance cost is about 20 to 30 percent less than the mills. Power consumption in diffuser is 20 percent less than the milling extraction. So you have more power to export. Operating cost is very low as you only require a one person per ship who will operate DCS or PLC. Sugar extraction, higher extraction in diffuser which means gain of around 1.5 percent at least. Raw juice quality much clearer juice low starch content from the diffuser, elimination of mud vacuum filters as in diffuser you can take mud directly from the clarifier and recycle into the diffuser and saving in bagasilo capital and maintenance cost of the filter station and filter cake loss also to the extent. Chainless diffuser is a new technology which is our you know, diffuser which we have done pioneered with Bosch projects. This diffuser, chainless diffuser is slightly different than the conventional chain diffuser in terms of look because you just have on outside two, power, two side power packs in the chainless diffuser. Otherwise rest of the construction and the process of diffusion remains the same. Chain diffusers has chains which are driven by tail and head end shafts and big penetry drives whereas in chainless diffuser you are having power pack and cylinders which are actuating the screens to avoid this maintenance cost, huge maintenance cost on chains. Secondly, the chain diffusers are very difficult to you know increase the capacity which is a big disadvantage whereas in the chainless diffusers you can uh, increase the capacity. In chainless diffuser all those problems which were there in chain we overcome and developed this which you will see in the rest part of presentation. In limitation of chain type diffuser very limited expandability, high capital cost of chain gearbox drive and structure, periodic high cost of chain replacement. These are the chain diffuser components you can see massive structure, top dresses, structure, then big base frames, shafts, head and shaft, tail and shaft, return roller idlers, lot of chains and heavy duty head shaft and gearboxes. You can see one more live photo of this, how this chain diffuser has this shaft and sprocket arrangement and big chain type diffuser has these gear boxes. If you see internal view, you can see there the lifting screws, these are called lifting screws and these are the chains which are running throughout the length and we are having a 
1.5 meter layer of cane over this. So because they are always wet, so maintenance cost is very high. If you see chain diffuser, the same lifting screws, but these are the screen instead of chains, which does the movement of cane. And in the side, you can see stainless steel cladded 1.5 meter walls where cane is has to move. It can be expandable to 100% capacity, lower capital cost, lower operating cost, lower maintenance cost, almost zero replacement cost, and short retention time. If you see a 3D diffuser, 3D view, this is the 3D view of uh, our chainless diffuser at uh, HPCL. It looks like this. Another view of 3D, that's a cross-sectional view. You can see inside these are the screens. Down there are the trays. Chainless diffuser has this hydraulic system as I explained, connected with the tie bars and these are the screen which gets actuated forward and reciprocating action. How does this work? To see, if you can see on your screens, this green portion is the cane and these are the screens. So you can see that three screens are moving in forward direction and then when they reach to the peak then all of a sudden the one is being pushed back. So this is how cane moves forward. So they work in the tandem four together and you can see all of a sudden with a higher speed they have been pushed back. So while moving in the forward direction they are moving very slow but when they are coming back, they are having three to four times higher speed and thus the cane remains there and the screen goes back and cane keeps on moving, this bed keeps on moving. The advantage of chainless diffuser, as I said, that steel and lifting screws, kicker, dewatering drums, pumps and piping, wall, etc. is 60% cost in both kind of diffuser, chainless and chain type. Drive system and moving screens is about 10% cost. Diffuser chains are costing around 30%. So you can see you are having 30% less cost in comparison to chain type diffuser. If you see, as I said, that maintenance cost is very less. You can see on the screen these points. Less maintenance cost against the chain type diffuser. No chain replacement in chainless diffusers. For major expansions, capacity chainless diffusers are cost effective. And in India, we almost expand each and every factory every three or four years. So it is a better option to us because flexibility of speed and width, the capacity of chain diffuser can be enhanced. If you have installed 5,000, you can go up to 10,000 tons without any issue. The extraction of diffuser depends upon the retention time. Generally for good extraction, 70 minutes to 85 minutes is a good time. No compromise on extraction efficiency even after expansion. And this retention time is basically designed based on the design of the diffuser and based on the fiber content which a plant has. Now you can see that how additional moving screen, this is a diffuser, the blue part, the original diffuser which you have installed and this yellow portion is the cane which is moving in this diffuser. The, this portion we keep as bolted and this as a welded because this is a fixed side. While doing expansion, we just remove this bolted portion and being shifted to this side and this is further extended like this. So you have a extended capacity. If we compare 
use extraction technologies from milling tandem to conventional and chainless system for the same capacity and for the same fiber, but imbibition rate as we know is slightly higher in diffusers. We can get higher extraction, about 1.5 to 2 percent at least. The raw juice quality, if milling is the base, then you have low starch content in chain type diffuser because the cane bed acts as a uh, filter media and juice goes down by leaving all suspended impurities. Your clarification capacity also increases. Bagasse moisture is about same. The pole percent bagasse which is in mills 1.6 or 1.5 in the conventional mill, you know, diffuser or in chainless diffuser you can go as low as 1.0. The pole as low as 1. Power consumption in mill is around 14 to 15 kilowatt hour per ton. Whereas in case of diffuser you have only 11 to 12 kilowatt hour per ton per hour. Capital cost, the chain type diffuser is about 20 percent less than the milling and chainless diffuser about further 20 percent less than the milling. So about 60 percent of the milling cost you can say. Similarly maintenance cost is also around 35 to 40 percent of milling in our chainless diffuser. Expandability in milling is possible but limited if you have provided initially the you know zero mill provision or last mill provision. In chain diffuser almost zero expandability whereas in chainless diffuser it is very easy to expand. The motive power AC BFD with gearbox and rope coupling whereas in this AC BFD with gearboxes and drag chain. In chainless diffuser you are having this with the hydraulic system. So it can be concluded from this table that in diffuser sugar losses of bagas and total power consumption is significantly lower than the milling. And if we compare chainless to chain type diffuser then the huge maintenance cost associated with chain diffuser and limited option of expandability puts it behind the chain plus diffuser. So chainless diffuser is a state of art technology which is more economical and easily expandable as compared to conventional chain type diffuser. Just to give you a glimpse in the fabrication how we do in our workshop in Yamunanagar. This is, this requires very state of art fixtures to make this chainless diffuser. You can see these are the jigs which are formed and this is the screen which you are seeing. This screen is made 60 meter long and just 750 mm wide with only tolerance of 1 millimeter and they have 10 mm dia holes with 40 percent opening. This is stainless steel screen. These are the bars, tie bars which are connected on the screens in the bottom and through and through 60 meter they are connected to the cylinder which cylinder actuates the screen through these bars. So the straightening of these bars is very important and even in transportation to the factory we also take care that it should reach straight and you can see their straightness is checked on a special jig and the welding with the screen is also done in this tying position on this jig. And then after welding you can see the straightness of this, the frame is ready. This is also the frame where this, the bar is arranged with the fish plate. And then ultimately screen is welded on this and this whole one system is ready. And then we put a polymer strip where screen moves on the polymer strip. 
This is about 10 mm thick strip. And in one year, it wear out around 1 mm. This is how the juice trough of diffuser is being fabricated. There are around 11 or 12 such kind of troughs in the bottom. And juice goes below a screen in these troughs. And from here, it goes to the juice pump, which pumps to next stage. These are the lifting screws drive. These are the geared motors on the top of it. And this is the screw, which there are two such stages of the lifting screw. And each is having five or six, depend upon the width of the diffuser, a number of uh, these lifting screws. When there are chances when can cane bed becomes settled, so the percolation of juice becomes very difficult. So these are agitating them and making the percolation of the juice very easier. These are the connectors which are connected to the hydraulic cylinder of moving a screen from the both the sides of diffuser. These are different juice distribution rounders. This is the structure of diffuser. So you have seen that uh, fabrication of chainless diffuser is also requires a state of art facilities and very uh, you know tough stringent environments where you know straightness of the screen, straightness of the diffuser, tying bars, these all are very important. Otherwise, if metal to metal contacts comes, then uh, it will be creating problem while operation. Hence, the straightness is very important. Now we will take you to the sequence of erection, how chainless diffuser are erected on the side. Initially when you will see, there are so many white small pedestals. So unlike of milling, you have very small pedestals on which diffuser get erected. So you have to prepare a foundation like this, pedestal which is not like mill, which is very heavy kind of foundation. So you save a lot of civil cost in case of diffuser compared to mill. And then you fabricate, this fabricated structure is being put on these uh, foundation pedestals. And you form a table kind of a structure and hold this, which is a base for putting up a screen. And in between, there is a two uh, stage. In between, there is a lattice to absorb the expansion. Because in diffuser, we know we keep a temperature around 75 to 80 degree. So expansion takes place in this hole. And there is a margin to absorb that expansion here. Then you put these trays into it. And both sides, you form a table where you want to put your power pack, both the sides. These are the pumps placed in the bottom. You can again see the side fabrication is on and the trusses are also going up. This is a structure for drum, dewatering drum which we call another stage of erection. Now power pack is on the place and these are the cylinders on its place. This side you, you can see the mill. Now the whole structure is ready. You can see this stainless steel cladding of about 1.5 meter, which is going to be in contact with the juice. These are all the table which we formed. And the screen is going to run on these channels when it will be placed finally. This is how two different tie bars are connected with the fish plate. So now you can see the screens are put and diffuser is ready with the juice distribution louders. These are the piping for the juice. So you can see in the diffuser, there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So there are almost 12 stages. 
and the juice from the last stage is pumped to the next one, from next one to the next, next to next. So this is how, like, like milling, the juice keeps on going to the first two stages from where it is collected as a scalding juice, heated, again put back, and from first stage ultimately connect, sent back to the These are the tie which are connected to, through, through the cylinder, you can see here. And this is the screen, screen tie bar. Now you can see how it works. You can see from a video. This is very slowly taking it up and this is going, you see, very fast back. So the, in the circuit of four, three are moving forward direction and the fourth one is going back, like that. So this is about how these cylinders are going to move. Once again, inside view of the diffuser, these are the called lifting screws. There are two stages, as I said, one and the second one down there. And these are the screen from here to here is one screen. And these screens are separated by almost one mm gap and through and through up to the 60 meter. So as I told you, the precision in manufacturing is very important. These are lifting screw bed on the top of the diffuser. Bed height of 1.5 meter. SS cladding. This is called dewatering drum. While the, this goes out, all the bagasse, this extracts the moisture. And this is a hollow drum. You can fill the water inside this drum to increase the dewatering effect of the bagasse which is going to the mill for further dewatering. Ideally if we get 75 to 80 moisture out of diffuser then it is good and then two stage milling will be enough to do the dewatering, rest of the dewatering. These are rotary screens on the top of the diffuser. These are the mills for dewatering. During shutdown, there is a, this blue color thing which you can see is a diff, uh, sweeper and this sweeper sweeps down the all the bagasse and empties the diffuser so you can clean it and prepare it for the off season and how it works we will show you through a video. So when factory stops or there is any shutdown or no king, you can see that this sweeper takes away all the bagasse and this remains clean. This is called the, you know, sweeper, the blue one. And there is a mechanism by which it goes back, which we'll show you in subsequent slides. You will see how it goes back. You see the floor level beneath diffuser, very clean, neat and clean during the operation, unlike milling. There's that one diffuser in operation. And This is the video of the user in operation. It's 
So by this installation you can see and in fact most of the installations of diffusers are on, in open. So you can install this diffuser in open and for the mill you require a building. So this also a cost saving, huge civil cost saving when you don't have uh, those EOT cranes and mill buildings and civil foundations, big civil foundations for mill and mill drives. ISJEC has designed and installed two sugar projects for Hindustan Petroleum as I explained you earlier in Sugoli and Lauria. The capacity of these diffuser plants are 3500 TCD and they have chainless diffusers. Both, are, both these diffusers are running on a very high level of automation and with a very efficiency that they, they have shown. The, the, the results which we have got very encouraging and very close to 97.7 to 98 RME and poles sometimes even less than 1. The results which are recorded at the mill is the crushing has gone up to 3900 which is 114 percent capacity utilization and I'm pretty sure it can go further up if cane is available because cane is not more than this in this factory. Reduced mill extraction can certainly go beyond 98. The, the average year figure is 97.7. The electric power consumption is 11.5 and the moisture in bagasse is 49.2 percent. So if we see what kind of recovery we are talking from the milling tandem. Generally people are having even 95 extraction but if I take 96 as a benchmark then there is an increase of 1.7 and at the present rate of sugar price we can see that, that we can save up to 500 lakhs in terms of recovery and from power if we take 4.5 rupees per unit then probably 90 lakhs of rupees you save in one season on 3500 TCD capacity and the extra power export because of saving Bagasilo, which is 8 kg per ton of cane, you have another 110 lakhs. So total saving is in, in the tune of 700 lakhs. This is the photograph of chainless diffuser in Sugoli plant in uh, HPCL, Hindustan Petroleum Corporation. You can see it is in open. We have, if we see in this photograph, you can see this is a low pressure heating module because generally people talk of that in diffuser, you have to put every alternate compartment exhaust steam connection and you going to crush at 320 percent of maceration. So more water means more steam consumption. So to counter this, we have developed a low pressure uh, heating module and this low pressure heating module for diffuser gives you the same steam consumption as a sulfitation normal milling plant gives. In this we are maintaining diffuser bed temperature 80 degree by pumping the juice through direct contact heaters which are very next to the evaporator, uh, evaporator and diffuser in between evaporator and diffuser and we are using all these vapors from fourth and third vapor to control the steam consumption in the plant. This is that module again for you. This is the photograph. This is diffuser. This is the evaporator you can see in behind this module. Another photograph where diffuser and module is clearly shown. This is the piping which is coming from the heating module to the diffuser back. Another photographs of this diffuser. So it can be seen from the presentation that with installation of chainless diffuser there are genuine advantage to be gained and that will allow factory to operate at a higher level of coal extraction efficiency with less operation cost, more power to export and 
almost zero maintenance cost. Thank you very much. Thanks for being with us.